Hi, Bhuvana. How are you? So, Bhuvana, can you tell us something about yourself? Uh, yes, my name is uh, Chandi Bhuvana Prabha. I completed my master's in 2019. And after that, I joined uh, the testing uh, domain. Now, I'm currently working as an automation tester from at Gen Amplify Solutions uh, Hub. I'm having a total experience of 3.5 years. And uh, I'm good at like uh, Java, Selenium, and uh, Selenium web driver. And I'm also having knowledge on hybrid framework. Uh, see, hybrid framework, we are using the page object model, test ng, and data driven. With these three, we are executing our framework. And um, uh, I can push and pull the code from GitHub and also some Jenkins environment. I have knowledge on that. Uh, currently, I'm working on the telecom health domain project. Uh, see, this is the project like uh, we can easily communicate with the doctors as a patient. Uh, they can make online and offline booking uh, without wasting their time. We can uh, uh, access the doctor. We can have the approach to the doctor quickly. And this is having three modules like a doctor, user and admin. So doctor can register by submitting all his documents. And uh, after registering, he can uh, uh, book the slots. He can uh, fix his slots for the day, but at what time he's free. Uh, he has to do that things and he has to maintain a prescription of his one. And also as a user, I'll log in and uh, I'll maintain some medical history, basic medical history. And based on the consultation that I wanted to approach, I can uh, select the doctor uh, as of the uh, part. And admin is having all the access for like permissions and everything that will be given by admin. Admin can view the number of doctors, number of uh, users, and the revenue generated and everything. And based on that, uh, he can make some decisions on that uh, application. Correct, correct. Okay, great. So basically, it's an healthcare domain, right? Yes. In which you are working. Wonderful. Okay. So you were telling that you have got command on Java. Java is a programming language that you are using for test automation purpose. Yes. Mm. Okay. So why do we need a constructor in Java? Uh, constructor is generally to initialize the values. For example, uh, in the uh, I'll use in the base class, I'll put some uh, web driver there. I will be initializing it and using the constructor everywhere. I can uh, use that web driver without uh, defining uh, every time. Right. So constructor is used to initialize the object, maybe with the default or with the initial state. Right. So that is one of the reason. Right. And the different types of constructors we can use parameterized constructor. We can pass the parameters. We can use default constructor as well. That is also possible. Okay. What is aggregation in Java? Aggregation? Hmm. Um, you know about inheritance? Ah, yes, I know inheritance. Okay. Similarly, you have aggregation as well. I'm not telling similar on the same lines, but it's a concept. Okay. So inheritance is a different concept. Aggregation is a different concept. What is aggregation? I know that oops concept, but aggregation, I Okay, okay. So let me assist you with that. Uh, is the screen visible to you? No. Not yet. Now? Yes. See aggregation it represents has a relationship right so you have a situation where you have employee object it might contain various informations id name address salary right so it can have more than one object named address right so here is a simple example you can have class employee you can have id name address for that so any class that has got an entity reference it is referred to as an aggregation right has a relationship in short right that is known as aggregation okay now tell me what is inheritance and what are the types of inheritance uh, inheritance is nothing but acquiring the properties of the parent to the child hmm. so inheritance can be achieved uh, uh, so sorry inheritance like a single level inheritance hmm. uh, uh, multi-level inheritance uh, multiple inheritance 
and one more thing uh, in single and chain type single level inheritance like we have only one parent and one child chain is having like uh, first uh, a and uh, the i extend that a into b again i'm having c i'm extending the b into the c so that called is a chain uh, whereas multiple is not supported by java because we can uh, use the extend keyword only once and the uh, inheritance can be achieved by using the extend keywords mainly we use this for uh, code reusability uh, so that we can uh, uh, don't waste of time writing the code again and again correct correct code re reusability is a purpose of the inheritance okay now uh, what do you know about arrays in java okay array is like uh, the where we can store the more than one object of same data type homogeneous data type instead of declaring the uh, the data types in single different different lines of say, if we are having the same data type we can store them in the single place it is called array collection of uh, objects right. and uh, so we can use for manipulating the data insertion sorting and indexing we will be indexing will be there in arrays uh, so, if we wanted to uh, loop into the array, we can use for loop. And uh, yes, this is the use of arrays. Right, right. Now, see, let me share the screen. This is your original array, 52871, okay. for example. Now, you have to sort this array in an ascending order, 1, yes. 2, 5, 7, 8, right? So, can you write the Java program for the same? Yes, but actually we have some method like arrays dot sort. Yes, yes. So that is use that. direct method. That is ah. a good thing you can use. In an interview, they'll ask yes. you to yeah. So uh, firstly, like... we'll be storing one variable like uh, uh, first uh, one variable in the a of zero, and after that I will be comparing that each and every element with that array, and I'm storing that if the array is less oh. than this number, I'll be storing in the array. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Can you can you write the Java program? Can you share your screen and write the program? You can be comfortable with Notepad, Notepad plus plus ID, whichever thing. Can I use my Eclipse? Whatever, whatever thing. Yeah. So open Eclipse. You don't have to uh, screen share your company's framework. You can use your own uh, framework itself. Just I'm write sure. one simple Java program. Okay. Yeah. I am sharing my screen. Yeah, yeah. You need to click on share screen, green color button. I shared. Is it visible for you? Uh, no, no, not yet. Okay. Is it visible now? Uh, yeah, yeah. The zoom screen is visible. Now, uh, yes, yes. Visible. Screen. Yes. So, you have to write a Java program to sort the arrays in an ascending order.
Hello. Yes. Uh, I think I'm missing some logic here. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So can you run this program once? Yes. What is the output you are getting? I'm getting two and all fives. Two, five, five, five. Okay, it's uh, getting five, but ascending order, then it should start with one, one. two, three, yes. four, five. Mm -hmm. No problem. See, I'll show you the solution for this. Okay. Uh, your screen sharing will be stopped. See this is the algorithm first let me tell you the algorithm and this is one of the approach see this is not something uh, in java you can have only one approach. you can have multiple approaches for the java initialize array so you'll initialize that you did then you will be printing and we are taking one of the third variable here right then the for loop i think you have also went for the for loop and you have also applied the for loop and we are taking the length of the array yes. then we will print that array now we will repeat eight step and nine step right for this within this for loop itself right so we are having two for loops one is your outer loop one is your inner loop okay and then we are printing it now let me show you the program as well see initialization of the array taking new variable now displaying elements of the original array so this is a normal program in which you will be displaying your array now we want to sort it in the ascending order so we will be using two for loops as i told you this is your outer for loop the normal for loop it is same as this one okay there is nothing to worry about same as this one and this is your inner for loop in which you are dealing with the j condition so this is with i this is with j now if condition if i arr array of i is greater than array of j then accordingly we'll take the sorting if it is not then we will keep it as is and then we will print so that's how you can print the arrays you can you can print the arrays in the sorting order in the ascending order okay now you can share your screen i want you to write any simple code which can explain encapsulation oops concept encapsulation so inheritance we saw that yes. was a theoretical thing encapsulation using the code concept encapsulation yes encapsulation actually i i never used in my work but i'll try actually, yeah yeah if you haven't used encapsulation and if you have used abstraction you can try that abstraction i yes i used yeah so abstraction you can try and take your time to think no problem with that we have sufficient time
yes sir this is the example of uh, mm -hmm. abstraction uh, actually uh, through abstraction we cannot achieve 100 percent abstraction mm -hmm. uh, there will be some concrete methods also like as i defined here uh, i gave the body to this uh, method where else i made this method as abstract so if i am using the abstract keyword then it is not needed to use an implement there we can extend mm. uh, if i use interface then i have to use an implement keyword and 100 percent abstraction can be achieved through interface right right okay now see i'll i'll show you one example with respect to this okay. see what you have done is you have created an abstract class with two methods yes so this is fine this aspect is fine uh, instead of one method you have created two methods in one method you have got the body in one method you uh, haven't kept the body yes. now you have to showcase another class which extends your this class and in that you have to define the body of the one of the method which was abstract in your abstract class and then the normal main method right as is right. so that's how you can define okay now uh is it possible that abstract class can have final methods or not? Uh, yes, if we know final method means uh, it will be changing like body will be changing in the abstract class method. Mm -hmm. uh, so it will be the uh, responsibility of the class that it is going to extend. It should implement the class like method, whatever it, that suits for that class. So I'm extending in one class and I'm giving one method and i can extend in another class and i can change the body okay but can it have final methods uh yes if i give final keyword it can be but in uh, interface we can, it uh, by default they are final and uh, static correct correct okay now can your abstract class have constructors and static methods as well uh abstract uh, you're saying like abstract class yes yes abstract class can it have constructors and static methods yeah if i give constructor then i can use uh, super constructor like uh, when i extend this into yes we can do it. right right it can have right so these are simple rules for the abstract class an abstract class must be declared by an abstract keyword that you know it can have abstract as well as non-abstract methods it cannot be instantiated it can have final methods it can have constructors and static methods also right it's simple straightforward rules for the abstract class great okay what do you know about collections in java oh, yes uh, the uh, like uh, overcome the disadvantage in the array we can overcome from collections where mm -hmm. uh, they are dynamic we don't need to specify the size they can, uh, like they're flexible if we wanted to add something in future and we can add them so collection is the group of objects mm. uh, which can be like either homogeneous or heterogeneous if i'm specifying the heterogeneous data type i can specify like as object object mm. is the parent uh, data type it can hold any data types okay. Okay. Um, so it is a, and uh, we can do many operations uh, using the collections uh, like array list mostly we use array list and set in the selenium Mm. Uh, through that, uh, we can uh, access the list of all the list and we can select them and the drop downs. We can use the list and set when uh, window handles, we can use set. Okay. Fine. List does list allow duplicate elements? Yes, list allows duplicate elements. Mm -hmm. uh, can and we store the, null elements in the list? Yes, we can store. Okay. Great. So list in set is fine. List allows duplicate elements. Set does not allow in duplicate list. elements. Insertion yeah. order is preserved in the list, in array list, whereas insertion is not preserved in the set. Correct. Correct. Okay. Then list implementations are array list you can have. You can have linked yes. list. Set implementations you have has, has set. Have linked has set. Those things you can have. Great. Okay, why string class is final in Java? Because uh, string class mm. is immutable. Once uh, we declare the string with some value, we cannot change. 
uh, even though there are many methods so that we can uh, manipulate the string but if we wanted to uh, like uh, uh, print out them either we have to store them in the different uh, variable of string or else we can directly print in the statement mm -hmm. it is immutable right right okay buana i am done with the interview from my side do you have any questions for me so do i need any improvements in the yeah yeah so let me tell you that 